So now we will try to learn what is diplomacy, uh, what, is, what are the functions, what is the nature of diplomacy, why diplomacy is important or, or the underlying principles behind diplomacy and all aspects of diplomacy. Yeah. So once we will we'll move to the first slide. So diplomacy is nothing but an area of speciality in international relation that focus on the tactical intergovernmental relationship aimed to achieve national interest without being confrontal between or among the nation. It is basically not going into a fight but rather you speak each other and try to do something. Uh, and the people who do this on behalf of their country are called diplomats which I have told you. So there are two things, diplomacy as well as diplomats. So these are the major important factors or aspects of diplomacy. Diplomacy is a vessel for peaceful cooperation, dialogue, negotiation, cohesion, harmony among nations. Diplomacy is a governmental channel for economic trade, social, cultural, political and technological anchored on mutual relationship among nations. Yeah. See these are the major important things. Is a Diplomacy is a veritable means for conflict of resolution, peace building in crisis situation between or among the nation. It facilitates information, communication and knowledge exchange between or among the nation. Okay, moving into the next slide. I think I have taught you what is the, the nature of diplomacy. The first one is uh, the the and, uh, the factor is the first the first factor is that diplomacy is immortal. I think I've explained this, so I'm just going like uh, in a fast way so that we we have to learn the functions. So so this is the uh, first nature. Diplomacy is not immortal. It is not immortal. Yeah. So. It's a means of international relation. It is a machinery for action. It acts through settled procedures. Diplomacy functions through a network of foreign offices, embassies, legation, consulates, and special mission across all over the world, and according to definite and settled procedure for protocol. Yeah. So, bilateral as well as multilateral in form. Diplomacy handles all type of matters. Breakdown of diplomacy always leads to crisis. Diplomacy operates both in terms of peace as well as war. Diplomacy works in an environment characterized both by conflict and cooperation. The tenth one is diplomacy always works for security, securing national interest of the nation it represents. Diplomacy is backed by national power. Diplomacy is backed by national power and the, the test of success of diplomacy. So these are the, the important nature of diplomacy which I think I have explained in the Zoom class. So I was just brushing it, whatever is there. So now we will try to understand the objectives of diplomacy. Broadly speaking, diplomacy seeks to secure two types of primary objective for the nation it represents. They are, first one is political objective and second one is non-political objective. As the name indicates, Political ob uh, objectives always work to secure the goal of national interest as defined by the nation foreign policy. So in a foreign policy of a nation, it, there is, it is defined that the primary aim of all foreign policy is to secure national interest. So, so keeping in mind that the political objective of diplomacy is to secure the goal of national interest. It always works for the increasing the influence of state over other state. It uses persuasion, promise of rewards and other such means of this purpose. Non-political objective of diplomacy. The interdependence among nation is most important and valuable fact of international living. Each nation depends upon the others for economic, industrial, link and trade. 
So other than the aspects which are mentioned in the foreign policy, diplomats used to promote the economic, commercial, cultural link of the nation with other nations. So this is broadly the two main objectives of diplomacy. So the two objectives are, first one is political objective, second one is non-political objective. So coming into the six major devices of diplomacy. The first one is persuasion. What, is, what do you mean by persuasion? Through logical reasoning, diplomacy seeks to convince others of the justification of the goal which it is trying to uphold or to promote. That basically means that if, let's say, if one country want another country to do something else, it would ask the other country or it would try to convince the other country saying that this is very important for them. If they do this help, that country would help you for other thing and, and, and many other uh, the, the country which is just trying to pers uh, like uh, seek uh, convince other nation who try to tell them that we we are, we are in their need of this please help us or or if you help us we'll we'll help you back so the first one is persuasion the second one is rewards so diplomacy can offer reward for securing acceptance of a desired view of a particular international dispute issue or a problem i think we have studied the second world war sorry first world war in which italy was promised that it would be granted certain financial and other compensation but it, that that didn't work out so the uh, the the you can also through, do the diplomacy through rewards it can be territory it can be finance it can be technology it, it even can be military in the present scenario yeah the yeah the third the third one is the promise of reward and concessions yeah the promise of reward basically says that diplomacy can promise matching rewards and concessions for securing a particular change or maintaining a particular view in the policy of their nation so uh, the it basically means that Diplomacy can promise a matching reward or concession for securing a particular change or maintaining a particular view in the policy of other nation. If let's say, uh, see, let, let's take the example of in the relationship between India and Palestine. Before India becoming very close with the US, India was keeping a good relationship with both with Israel as well as Palestine. But once US comes into the picture, we try to move away from Palestine, we are getting more close with Israel. That is the best example for that. The, the fourth one is a threat of use of force. That is obvious, you all know that diplomacy cannot use force or violence in promoting the national interest. However, it can use threat of force, ultimatums, symbolic boycotts, so, sorry, symbolic boycotts, protest workout, or even a threat of war. This is basically telling you that the diplomacy cannot directly use force, rather than they can they can tell them that we will use the force. They can, you can, a nation can threaten us or make the other nation scary. Or they, they, the, the forms in which they would do are through ultimatums, through symbolic boycotts, through protest workouts, or even the threat of war, which say that if you, if you should do this before this particular period, or we are trying to boycott, uh, or or we, we are trying to boycott you in in. Uh, in any, any international forum or in protest workout or all these kind of things. So the fifth one is non-violent punishment. By depriving a promised reward of a nation, diplomacy can inflict non-violent punishment on other nation. This is nothing but they can, yeah, India uh, tested nuclear weapons. So India was, uh, in the US put some ban on India with regard to trade and many other things. That is a kind of non-violent punishment. Yeah. The sixth one is the use of pressure. By using pressure tactics, diplomacy can force other nations to accept the desired view or policy or decision or goals that it represents beside. Beside these, diplomacy use propaganda, cultural links, exploitation of situations, creation of particular scenes, and rigidity. In in Kaudali, it suggests Sam, Dham, Dhanda, Veda, Nidhi as the tactics of diplomacy. Those are 
the tactics mentioned in the Arthashastra. Yeah. So, so those were the the six devices of diplomacy which you have learned. So now we will go to the functions and the role of diplomacy. In performing its task and securing its national objectives, diplomacy has to undertake a number of functions. This is very important. You have to learn what are the major functions of diplomacy that can be also be asked in, in exams also. The first one is the ceremonial <coughs> as well as symbolic function. The diplomats of a nation are symbolic representative of the nation and they represent the state and the government in all official ceremonies and functions in non-official, social, cultural and held in the place of their posting. Yeah, so let's let's take the example of uh, the US president visiting India. Definitely the ambassadors of the US would take part in that or else just think about a, a, a special meeting conveyed by Prime Minister Definitely, all the ambassadors, foreign officials will be will be uh, called for the meeting. They will be briefed. They will also have a part. They will also given a, a space to speak. And so, this is basically the first function: ceremonial as well as symbolic function. The second one is representation. This is quite easy. A diplomat formally represents his country in a foreign state. He is a nominal agent of the communication between his home office and that of the state to which he is accredited. Yeah, let's say uh, if India, yeah, now India, uh, the India government is trying to get expats. Expats is basically the citizens who are living in other country. So Indians are basically working in Gulf. So in this Corona situation, they are trying to get Indians from. Gulf countries to India. So, so how do India is doing it? India is doing through its ambassador in UAE. So he is representing the, our country in UAE. His representation is valid and political. He can vote in the name of his government. Of course, in doing so, he is totally bounded. He is totally bounded by the direction of his home office and the foreign policy of the nation. Yeah. See, once I tell you that they can represent their home nation, their representation or their activity should be within the foreign policy of the nation. Yeah. The, the third one is negotiation. To conduct negotiations with other states is substantive function of diplomacy. Sorry. Yeah, so to conduct negotiations with other states, the substantive function of diplomacy. So diplomats observe Palmer. Yeah, see, diplomats like Palmer and Perkins are defined by negotiators. They are the channels of communication which handles the transmission of messages between foreign ministries of the parent state and the host state. There is not uh, the the it it basically means that the uh, let's say if I am an ambassador of a particular nation, my nation or my state would convey many things through me to this particular country. So that is happening in this situation. So they are the channel of communication which handles the transmission of messages between foreign ministry of a parent state and host state. If let's say many Indians are being held in Iraq, for example. Let's say terrorist bait. Uh, terrorists are. Uh, let's say ter terrorists have stranded people. So if India want to rescue those people, the first and foremost thing India can operate is through through its ambassadors, through its foreign officials. So along with the nature of message, the manner and style of delivering the message greatly influence the source of negotiation. The role of diplomacy in conducting negotiations has, however. Declared in our time because of the emergence of multilateral diplomacy, personal diplomacy, political diplomacy, submit diplomacy, direct communication link among the world, and stop statement. Now the the role of 
uh, negotiations are coming down. This is precisely because now nations used to speak each other. Like if, if we know that if there is something else in that Indian Prime Minister would speak with uh, the other nation and uh, and uh, and take action in the, in, in uh, uh, the required action, whatever is required in it. So uh, uh, the the so whatever if 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 one particular nation want to convey it to the other nation, they, they the, now the leaders are also doing it directly. So. So the prominence of negotiation is coming down nowadays, but that that doesn't mean that the prominence has gone. The prominence are still there, but because of the multilateral new kind of diplomacy, there are submits, there are meetings, negotiations, and communication among the world leaders. The role of negotiation is coming down. So next slide is the next one is reporting. Reporting is nothing, it involves observation of political, economic, military, social conditions of the host country and accurate transmission of the finding of diplomats to his home country. Yeah, let's say, uh, you know, there was a uh, riot in Delhi in in uh, now, like in the last February or, or in, in Jan, I guess. So, yeah, so, uh, yeah, in, in, it was in February. So in that situation, all ambassadors would give a report to its, its, its current country saying that these are the problems that India is facing and it would at, at time it would also issue alerts to its citizens. Let's say uh, uh, there is a problem in India, the UK ambassador would announce that the citizens of UK who are in India should be aware, should be careful. So those are the kind of message that they do. The political reporting involves a various uh, reporting about assessment of the roles of various political parties in, in the politics of host, host country. It, it seeks to access the friendliness of hostility of various political grouping. So all kind of things, economic issues, political issues, social cultural issues, everything will be reported to the host country. Sorry, uh, the, the economic, social and political condition of the host country will be reported to his home country. Host country is the country in which the diplomat is working. Let's say if Indian ambassador is working in UAE, UAE is his host country and his home country is obviously India. So he would definitely uh, transmit the economic political issues happening in the country to his home country. Economic reporting involves the sending of reports to the home office containing general information about military, health, trade and potential of the host country and the level of social cultural conflict among the nation. So all these aspects are being transmitted to the, the home country. Yeah, the protection of interest. The, the fourth point, diplomacy is always at work for protecting and promoting the interests of the nation and its people living abroad. Protection of interest is the bedrock of the practice of diplomacy. See the sentence. It is the bedrock of the practice of diplomacy. It, it works to secure compatibility out of incompatibility through accommodation, reconciliation and goodwill. A diplomat always try to prevent or change the practice which he feels are discriminatory to the interest of the his country. If it is responsibility to protect the person's property and interest of such citizens of his country are living in the territory of the state to which he stands post. Uh, this is basically the uh, same thing I was telling. Now uh, the Indian government is constantly interacting with the UAE ambassador to see how they can be the people, of, the, the citizens of India who are working in Gulf can be uh, uh, repatriated so they, they can be transported from that particular nation to India. So, so he is basically responsible for all kind of people, all people who are living there. Through all these functions, diplomats play an important role in international relations. Yeah, so these are basically the functions of diplomacy, ceremonial representation, negotiation, reporting and protection of interest. This, this, see, uh, these are the, the new functions of diplomacy. The, the 
kind of diplomacy has changed across the time because the, the, the kind of relationship among the nations are also changing and there is a new relation, there are new politics, there are new international relations that is happening now but there is also an all diplomacy which was already there very long back. For the sake of understanding, I am telling you what is all diplomacy. Diplomacy in its traditional form is known as all diplomacy and its main features are as follows. I will tell you. First one is European diplomacy. All diplomacy was primarily confined to Europe because only the, the Europe was able to have ambassadors, they were only able to have relationship among the nations, which uh, we, have, we know the situation before the coming of uh, all countries, before the, the decolonization, before many countries becoming independent, it was Europe which was supposed to be the cradle of or the epicenter of the world. So being an imperial continent which controlled and ruled the continents of Asia and Africa, and so Europe was the center of all kind of international activity. This is basically a situation that was prevailed in the colonial era. We are trying to learn what is the all diplomacy. Second one is aristocratic. In all diplomacy, the conduct of foreign relations was considered to be prerogative of the king or the rulers and their trusted ambassadors. See, now almost all countries are democratic countries. So there are uh, 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 there is a way in which diplomats are appointed in India. Diplomats are basically selected through civil service examination. Those who secure, the, those who are allotted the service of Indian Foreign Service are generally appointed as ambassadors. The diplomats used to be selected by monarch, but earlier, this is the all diplomacy, earlier diplomats used to be selected by the monarchs and were responsible to their lords. Diplomacy was conducted as by a class of professional diplomats and was, was characterized by an air of aristocracy, nobility and class consciousness. So now, it, there's a bureaucracy which do that, but earlier, before the, the this practice of international relation or the new international order, when Europe was a peace center, they were appointing their nobles and high allies as the diplomats. The second one is emphasis on, on virtues. All diplomacy was aristocratic and hence regarded several well-defined and accepted principles as cardinal principles or virtues of diplomats. Honesty, integrity, truthfulness, politeness, fairness, strict conformity to protocol, secrecy and total commitment to national interests were considered to be the quality of diplomats. But nowadays it is not exactly like this. Uh, it, uh, sometimes if one nation wants to protect its interest, it might go beyond the principle of honesty, integrity, truthfulness, politeness, fairness or any any kind of these things. They might think that if, if, if their nation cannot get an interest being honest, they would definitely throw away this particular principle. They, they might not stick on to it. So this, these are the, so all diplomacy was giving emphasis for these things which now the new diplomacy is not giving that much importance. Yeah, so we will move on to the next one. The fourth one was secrecy. Secrecy is also as a, as the one of the main features even in the new diplomacy but was considered to be the hallmark of all diplomacy. The complete secrecy in respect of negotiation as well as about the outcome of these negotiations is considered to be vitally important condition for all diplomacy. But there is no complete secrecy which is not possible now because there are intelligent wings of the host country which will be able to know. Yeah, let's say India is trying to, uh, in, uh, there, are, there is an Indian ambassador in Pakistan. So India would definitely uh, try to get the secret information through that ambassador. But remember Pakistan has got a intelligence wing in Pakistan which would be able to trace it. So this complete secrecy is not possible in the current scenario. Freedom of action for the ambassador. Fourth one. Within the broad limit of agreed policy, diplomats handling diplomatic negotiations used to enjoy freedom of action. During the era of, era of all diplomacy, the ambassadors enjoyed considerable freedom in the matter of negotiations. Lack of speedy, continuous means of communication made it essential for the 
state to give wide power to the diplomat. So in the earlier diplo diplo uh, all diplomacy, ambassadors were having more power because they uh, they feel that if, if they are, if they are not given more power, the 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 action would not happen properly. But now the ambassadors are not so powerful; they are under the control of the government or more under the more control of the government. So. So this is basically the crux of diplomacy. So we have understood the nature, function, all diplomacy, and and so I am also sending the uh, this PPT to you, so you can listen to this lecture, see this PPT, then you can learn about it. Thank you.